So the results of this paper were actually first known as an abstract at SVP, or the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting in October. And they garnered a little bit of attention then when it was just an abstract, but now the whole paper's out, meaning we can actually talk about everything, including this figure, which shows the subject Dunkleosteus. And if you're familiar with Dunkleosteus, this seems wrong because we thought it was much longer than this for a long time now. Part of the problem with this is Dunkleosteus doesn't belong to any modern fish group. Instead, it's a placoderm. And there's some debate as to whether or not modern fish groups evolved essentially next to them as a sister group or directly from within the placoderms. But regardless, it wasn't like any modern fish. In fact, it mostly had hard bony plates across its skull. That's why we actually have one really great fossil of it that helps us to really understand its anatomy a lot better. Now, there are some other specimens, including one that's even larger, but it's just part of the lower jaw. But we can still scale that more complete one to this larger one, as long as we have a good estimate of the size of the smaller, more complete one. And that's what this researcher essentially did, is rather than trying to look at other placoderms specifically, which have some very diverse body shapes, including some with very long, almost eel-like bodies, which was more recently found to not be the case in Dunkleosteus, they essentially looked at a bunch of fish and went, okay, so rather than just looking at the ones that are closest related to Dunkleosteus, what do we look at all of them and see if there's any trends we can identify that help us to understand the size of these fish? And what they found that was really, really good for this is the orbit to operculum length. Now, the operculum is this kind of bony covering of the gills. If you've seen a bass or a bluegill or almost any fish, you've seen this, you just may not have recognized it. And essentially, that length is really great for predicting the overall length of fish. And what these researchers did is compared that to other fish that are also placoderms and tried to do the same thing there. Rather than using the kind of unique body shape of some of them, they used this specific metric, and it actually tracks with those fish as well. Meaning that, essentially, if you have this metric, you can try and tell how big the fish was. And that's what they did with Dunkleosteus. They looked at where the eye was and where the operculum ended and went, okay, it should be, rather than 30 feet long or around 9 meters, it should probably be around 12 feet long, 13 feet long, or about 4 meters. So, definitely not as big as we had thought it was which is unfortunate if you're kind of a fan of the big idea of it. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter because the skull doesn't change size at the smaller length. There have been some people online who have been at least a little bit upset that suddenly, you know, this 30 foot behemoth or leviathan swimming from the depths of the Devonian seas, it suddenly isn't as much of a leviathan. It's only 12 feet long instead of 30. The thing is though, a 12 foot long shark, like a bull shark, can still seriously injure and or kill people. So really it's not that big of a change. If you swapped the shark in jaws for Dunkleosteus that was only this size, the overall story stays pretty much the same. It's still gonna go around and potentially eat people if it were alive today. Like it's, it's not nearly as dramatic as some people seem to be making it out to be. And it makes a little bit of sense too, because this is from the Devonian. Essentially, this is one of the first times where the fish really diversified and really became dominant in the environment. And Dunkleosteus, of those, was the first one to really become an apex predator. Which, when you consider what was around beforehand, the Eurypterids as apex predators, it kind of makes sense that it wouldn't necessarily jump to a massive size right away. It might be a little bit smaller in some of those earlier oceans.